dear, he's in love. There's a tree house in the meadow below the mountain peak. The perfect place for lovers when they play hide and seek. There's a covered bridge at Cripple Creek where the horses always stop. Between the tree house and the covered bridge, that's how Mama and Pop I make him love in the country. And the flowers and the trees till you're up to your knees in love. There are roses on the trellis and the scent of new mown hay. The clinging vine is jealous on the fence across the way. There's a great big yellow moon above and a breeze to sing the song. Between the roses and the yellow, a fella can't go wrong if he makes love in the country. Drago. Morning, Curly. Make seven times this month he come home swoggled. Six. Seven. Six. Once was his birthday. They don't count. Give me my buggy whip. Didn't have anything for breakfast but two raw eggs and a mug of honey. No. Curly. Yes, boss. Don't say it's a fine morning or I'll shoot you. Get out of here, Bunyan. Good morning. Carlos, what are you doing up there? I hope I get it this time, Mr. McClintock. My brothers, they got the big hats already. All right, let them have at it. You don't let me drive. You promised me you would sometime. No, yeah. yeah. Boss, you better watch that turn on the road. Yeah. You're gonna kill both of us one of these days. There's one old pensioner I wish you'd pass up. 
Bunny? Yeah. Sure knew where I'd seen his face before. He ain't an old timer. He's just been around town a couple of years. Oh, you have no milk of human kindness. Morning, Mr. McClinic. Morning, Bunny. Well, I can see you're in good health. Never felt better, contrary to what you may hear. Me? My kidneys ain't what they used to be, and my liver's been leaving me bilious. Drago? Uh... Hello, Ben. Dave McClinic. Drago, throw that in the buggy. Yes, sir. The scrubby bunch of Sooners, huh? They are at that. That ought to make Douglas happy, lining his pockets with land fees. What are we gonna do? I don't know what you're gonna do, Ben. Me, I do nothing. 200 families. Quarter of beef a week for family. If they last two years, that can be a sizable number. I got 20 head to one of any other brand on the Mesa Verde. I'm not hollering. Some of us haven't got all the money in the world. Some of us ain't old and, and tired and feel like being put upon. You interest me, young Ben. Go on. So the first time I find one of our hides wearing our brand hung on one of them settler's fences, I aim to kill me a plowboy. You do what you want, McClinic. We'll do what we want. Fellas my age generally call me G.W. or McClinic. Youngsters call me Mr. McClinic. All right, Mr. McClinic. Not because I'm afraid of you. You're the big yeast out of this country. And I reckon a fellow my age should call you Mr. Full grown now, GW. He's a half owner of the spread. I made him a full partner the day the doc gave me the long face. Well, you want him to vote the first time this territory becomes a state, don't you? Of course I do. These settlers get burned out, there'll be a lot of hollering that this country's too wild to be a state. And we'll go on being a territory some more, with a lot of political appointees running it according to what they learned in some college where they think that cows are something you milk, Indians are something in front of a cigar store. <laughs> I'm looking to you to hold young Ben down. I'll do what I can. Come on over at the house once in a while. We'll rack up a few hands of stud. Gee, that'll be just fine. Hello, Ben. Morning, Mr. McClinic. It's a nice morning, ain't it, boss? Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. <laughs> like that again, eh? Here's something that'll cheer you up. About a thousand head. I figure they'll bring about 1250. They're not as fat as I'd like to ship them. They all off the North Range? Yes, sir. Settlers. Every one of them with a plow and a Bible. Not the slightest idea what the range is for. Drago! Drag out that hog leg. Yes, sir. Give me some attention. I'm McClinic. You people plan to homestead and farm the Mesa Verde? Yes, sir. The government give us each 160 acres. The government never gave anybody anything. Some years back, a lot like you came in. You had a pretty good first year, good summer, easy winter. But the next year, the last rain was in February. And by June, even the jackrabbits had sense enough to get off the Mesa. Folks, do you know who that is? That's McClintock, George Washington McClintock. I told him that, Douglas. He controls the water rights on 200 square miles of range. You know that lumber you got? It came from his land, cut by his loggers and milled in his mills. Douglas, I come close to killing you a couple of times when we were younger. Saddens me I didn't. Can you imagine a man who owns all that? Oh, and mines, too. I forgot to mention them. 
all that. And he's begrudging poor people a measly, a measly 160 acres. That right, Mr. McClinic? You begrudge us a little free land? There's no such thing as free land. You make these homesteads go, you'll have earned every acre of it. But you just can't make them go on the Mesa Verde. God made that country for buffalo. Serves pretty well for cattle. But it hates the plow. And even the government should know that you can't farm 6,000 feet above sea level. Any trouble, Mr. McClinic? No trouble, Jeff. How about you, Douglas? Douglas? Just plain Douglas, eh? And you call him Mr. McClinic. Why? Well, Douglas, I guess it's because he earned it. Mr. McClinic? Yeah? I'm a good hand with cattle, Mr. McClinic. I'd like a job. Well, you look strong enough. You come in with those suitors? Well, yes, sir, but we don't have a homestead. And... Can't use you. Chantilly lace available anywhere. Chantilly, Mr. Birnbaum. Well, believe me, it's the best. Oh, excuse me, please. Look around, take your time. Drago, I got a thousand Havana cigars and 12 of those hats for you over there. Them 12 big hats ain't gonna last long the way some folks have been dipping into that red eye these days. Uh oh. Good morning, GW. Good morning. I stole some stick candy. Please help yourself. Come on in. You can forget about saddling up the horse. Come in here. Problem? Yes. Well, if I were blacks, I'd move Queen's Bishop to King Four. Yeah, you might be right. You know, I was just starting to work this out when the letter came. Letter? It was... What happened? Don't you want it? Morning, Mr. McClinic. Morning, Davy. You being here saved me a trip. Oh. That hat and suit of clothes you picked out for my birthday? Well, instead of this cowboy hat, I'd like to have this one. If it's, um, all right with you, sir. Oh, well, it's all right with me, Davy. Of course, that looks like the kind of a hat a fella would wear down Main Street to start a fight. Oh, I don't need a city hat for that. All I have to do is walk down the street and some wiseacre will call me an Indian and just like that, the fight's on. Davy, the letter, it's for you. And you are an Indian. Yes, I know I'm an Indian, but I'm also the fastest runner in town. I've got a college education, and I'm the railroad telegrapher. But does anybody say, hello, college man, or hello, runner, or hello, telegrapher? No, not even hello, nothead. Davy, it's always let the Indian do Will it. Will you go out in the store and help the ladies? All right. I'm also a bookkeeper, part-time clerk. Always let the Indian do it. The lady brought that out here this morning, asked for it to be taken out to the home ranch for you. Handsome lady, kind of tall with red hair. Called me Mr. Birnbaum, just as if she'd never seen me before. And as if that veil that covered her face would keep me from recognizing her. I thought she was in New York or Europe or someplace. So did I. Jake, you better throw on a couple extra cases of the boss's favorite bourbon. That stuff sure gets used up fast out at our place. Which reminds me. You better start tapering off. <laughs> Catherine's in town. Katie? What was with Clifford? Morning, Morning, Mr. McClendon.
Good morning. Hello, Good morning, Matt. Right, darling. Fun a ride. Morning, G.W. What are you doing in here? Why aren't you out at the desk? Just helping out the bartender. Yeah, I see a busy day. Give me the key to room 17. What? 17, and don't advertise it. Here they come, Mr. McClenick. Set them up. Here, whiskey. Day off? Off day. Wonder what he's so preoccupied about. Haven't you heard? No, what? Katie's back in town. Katie? Yes, dear. The social arbiter. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi, Sonny. Good morning. Oh. <laughs> Sure is a one. Mr. McClinic, I don't want to bother you. But... I'm sorry, boy. I told you no job. you'd want this. First dig of the spur. But who am I to upset your plans? But you feel kind of silly. I never feel silly. It's because you have no sense of humor. Why couldn't we sit down in the hotel dining room and talk about whatever it is you want to talk about? Or why couldn't you just come over to the house? And have everybody know that we're meeting? Everybody knows, and what's the difference? We're married. That is something I should like to change. You know the answer, Katie. That isn't why you sent for me. Let's get to the rat killing. Oh, that's just the kind of remark that's always endeared you to me. Let us open the discussion. Very well. Our daughter is coming home in a few days. Or rather, she's coming here. It was just a slip of the tongue that made me refer to this ugly hamlet as home. Our daughter. Is it so hard to say her name? It's Becky. Rebecca! I hate that name. Anyway, she's coming home. And I hope to persuade you to let her live with me. Part of the time in the capital, part of the time in New York, and of course, Newport during the season. You're whistling in the wind, Katie. If she stays here, she'll become just as crude and as vulgar as all of this country. And if she goes your way, she'll be all show and no stay. Oh. No go, Kate. I hate you. Oh, how I hate you. Half the people in the world are women. Why does it have to be you that stirs it? That's the story. I saw your picture in the paper at the governor's ball. You were dancing with a governor. At least he's a gentleman. I doubt that. You have to be a man first before you're a gentleman. He misses on both counts. Sonny, you gonna ask him again? Nope. Hey, boy, you gotta park at your pride. You gotta beg. You better listen to an expert, Sonny. I'm telling you, you got to grovel. Human nature gets him every time. Mister, leave me alone. Everybody does it one way or another. <laughs> Thank you. 
About that job, Mr. McClinic. I already told you, son, I've got no need for farmers or use for them. Just one minute, Mr. McClinic. My father died last month. That's how come we lost our homestead. I've got a mother and a little sister to feed. I need that job badly. What's your name? Devlin Warren. Well, you got a job, son. See my home ranch foreman. He's over at the corral. <laughs> Step down off of that carriage, mister. Oh, that hog leg. I've been punched many a time in my life, but never for hiring anybody. Uh, I don't know what to say. Never begged before. Turn my stomach. I suppose I should have been grateful you gave me the job. Gave? Boy, you got it all wrong. I don't give jobs, I hire men. You intend to give this man a full day's work, don't you, boy? You mean you're still hiring me, Mr. McClinton? Well, yes, sir. I mean, I'll certainly deliver a fair day's work. And for that, I'll pay you a fair day's wage. You won't give me anything, and I won't give you anything. We both hold up our heads. Where do you live? The settler's encampment, down by the mine. That's your plug? Yes, sir. Well, hop on him and we'll go get your gear. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> I'm sure that all you fine people are interested in knowing just what uh, portion of this new land will be your new home. Oh, uh, 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 Jones and McAllister, since you've been more or less the leaders of our group, I'd like to have you come up and uh, uh, check the exact location. Won't be a minute, sir. Go up to that boy and give him $30. Tell him McClintock pays these riders a month in advance. From the looks of things, they can sure use it, too. Oh, Mom, it's Mr. Drago. Well, and what do we owe this visit from the cattle baron? I've got to touch a hangover, bureaucrat. Don't push me. Go ahead, Backman! Say, those are Indians. Are there Indians in this homestead land? Friendly Indians, my boy. Oh, running buffalo. Oh, Macklin. Long time. We all get drunk together. And it's going to be a lot longer time. Because it's against the law and you're with a sheriff. And if I got my hands full, they came into town to meet the train. The old Indian chiefs are coming home. I heard they'd been pardoned. They don't know when it's arriving, this week, next week, or next month. So in the meantime, I've got to do something with them. Could I cut out a couple of head of your steers to feed them? Otherwise, some of these settlers' milk cows are going to disappear. That's right, Macklin. <laughs> Cut out whatever you need. Sheriff, are you going to camp these savages with all these settlers? You're asking for trouble. Mr. Douglas, I already have plenty of trouble. Please stay off of my back. Run in Buffalo. Bring your people over to the clay slide. Hello. Hello, Mr. Macklin. Tiny Mouse, it's nice to see you. You wouldn't believe it now, but 20 years ago, she was a mighty handsome maid. 20 years ago, you thought so too, Mr. Douglas. <coughs> it was just like this. I had a dead beat on old running buffalo, and my sharp 50 caliber misfired. 
That's back in that trouble in the forties. Remember? I remember. Hey, you won't taste something come directly from heaven. No. Where'd you get this? That boy's mama baked them. You thinking the same thing I am? She's a widow woman, boss, and she's got a long, hard road home. Hire her. I always said you had a heap of sense. Mr. McClinic, this is my mother. Your mother? And my sister. Pleased to meet you, Mr. McClintic. Ma'am, this is my boss, and he has few choice words to say about your biscuits. Yes, Mr. McClintic? Well, they're great. Well, you old Ken knees reprobate, how about it? You fire me? I kill myself. I'm not talking about firing you, I'm retiring you. You've been rustling food for us for 30 years. We're gonna put you out to pasture. All you'll have to do is give advice. Be one of the family. I kill myself. I may save you the trouble. But, Ching, you kill yourself, I'll cut off your pigtail, and you ain't never gonna get to heaven. I'll be one of our family? I give you my solemn word. Pretty clummy family. Drink too muches. Get in fight. Yell all the time. Cut off his pigtail. All right, all right, I'll be one of a family. You play that, you play that. You play that. You play that. You play that. This is such a big house, it'll take me a while to get used to things. Now, please don't hesitate to tell me if anything is wrong. <laughs> no business, sir. Otherwise, it's fine. Everything are nicely. Who's finally. Who's telling fine. me, ma'am? Best apple pie ever had. Curly's right, ma'am. Hated to leave that last bite. Shall we celebrate with a drink? Carlos, come in and help me with the dishes. Alice, you want to help too? Yes, Jacob. All right, pitch in. Now I'll wash and you kids go dry. Is that good here? Don't seem possible. One woman could use all them clothes. You keep a civil tongue in your unprepossessing face. Yes, ma'am. And unload my baggage, please. Yes, ma'am. By the way, what does that word unprepossessing mean? Mrs. McClintock. Oh, hello, Carlos. Run and help the driver with my luggage. I couldn't trust anyone else in this house to do anything correctly. Luggage? Give him a hand, Curly. Yes, boss. Mr. McLennan? Are you moving back in? Yes, but nothing has changed except my place of residence. And I'd be willing to put up with savages rather than be denied the company of my daughter. And I'm proving that by moving in here. Mr. McLennan, since it's my first day, would you excuse me if I... Uh... Well, go ahead. Oh, Catherine, this is uh, Dev Warren. He joined the outfit today. Please, ma'am. Thank you. Well, how refreshing. A polite young man here. Where did he come from? He's a farmer. A farmer? Well, I'll be doggone. Kate, welcome home. What on earth are you doing in that idiotic-looking outfit? And don't you dare call me Kate. That's my butling suit. I'm butling for the boss. And I'm sorry, Catherine. That Kate kind of slipped out from the times I remembered you as being nice pe people. Oh. Are you going to stand there with that stupid look on your face while the hired help insults your wife? He's just ignorant. He doesn't know any better than to tell the truth. And I can't help this stupid look. I started acquiring it as you gained in social prominence. Mrs. McClendon, where do you want I should... What? Put him in the master bedroom. Yes. 
but move Mr. McClintock's things into another room. Oh, the one back of the stairs would be best so that he can't wake up the entire household when he comes home every Here's night. Here's the... Just before daybreak. Yes, ma'am. Oh, excuse me. Here's your cigars, Mr. McClintock. I am Mrs. McClintock. Kate, I mean, Catherine, this is the cook. Uh, this is the lady who does the cooking for us. Mrs. Warren, Mrs. McClintock. How do you do? Very pleased to meet you, Mrs. McClintock. Very pleased. Likewise. You see, I just came to work here today, and I guess I jumped to the conclusion that this was a, a bachelor's household. <laughs> it is, and then again, it isn't. I will explain so everything will be quite clear, Mrs. Wallace. Oh. Mrs. Warren. Warren. Mrs. Warren, it has been a bachelor's household for quite some time. And it will be again, just as soon as I am out of here, which will be as quickly as I can make arrangements to take my daughter back east with me. You see, she's coming home from school in a few days, and then we'll be off together, and you can return to conducting yourself as you consider proper in a bachelor's household. Katie! Shut up! Until then, I am mistress in this house. And I will give the orders. One my breakfast service. Go on, letter. Ain't you gonna say nothing, boss? Breakfast in bed. No. One poached egg, tea, toast. Oh, uh, GW. As soon as my things are put away, I want to talk to you about Rebecca. Yes, Mrs. McClintock. Indeed, Mrs. McClintock. Of course, Mrs. McClintock. The toast, lightly browned and unbuttered. Of course, ma'am. Where do you think you're going? I just remembered I got a date. But she said she wanted to have a talk with I you. I heard. Good evening, Lamb. Good evening, Mr. Mack. Yep. Say, Mr. Mack, what does unprepossessing mean? I was called that once, Lamb. Looked it up in the dictionary. It's best you don't know what it means. Uh-huh. Thank you. You hope? Hey! What am I going to tell her when she asks where you went? When in doubt, tell the truth. She wouldn't expect that from you anyway. Where's Mr. McClintock gone? There he goes, burning his last bridge. You see a yellow streak about a foot wide running up down his backbone. Well, Mr. McClintock, he ain't afraid of nothing. I once thought that. Yes, ma'am. Was that, uh... He took off, lit out. I told him I wanted to talk to yes, him. Yes, ma'am, I was standing right over here when you said it, and I was standing right out there on those front steps when he walked up to a horse, grabbed a hunk of mane, stepped up on him, and sunk spur. Where did he go? Last time I saw him, he's going east. But you know him, he's allowed to go north, south, or west. Get me a carriage. Yes, ma'am, but... But what? what? Maybe you shouldn't follow him into maybe where he's going into. What does that mean? I don't know, but I wish I hadn't said it. I'll just get the carriage. Yes, ma'am. What happened? Get the brooch. Brooch? Hitch it up. She wants to go to town. But Mr. McClinic never said anything to me about it. Look, young fella, I'm the ra I'm the ramrod around this place, and you better start giving me a yes, sir. You're going to get the roof of this house pulled down on your head. Yes, sir. Hello, lady. Hi, Mr. Clinic. New broom, eh? Quick, please. Hello, bunny. How is everything? Oh, fine, fine, Mr. McClinic. I'll get you next time. Be 
Lovely match. Same as usual. Lady. Evening, GW. Jake. Wrong move. What? Chess problem. Queen's in danger. Bottom? I'm uh, learning the game of chess. <laughs> Thought it would give me something to pass the time. See, I have nothing to do all day long, and I uh, just remembered something. Catherine, I didn't hear you come in. Mr. McClintock, I told you that I wanted to talk to you. Not now. Uh, could I get you a glass of sherry, Catherine? Oh, thank you, Mr. Birnbaum. I could use one. I came into town behind a runaway team. Drago never could handle horses. It was that young man whose mother pretends to be your cook. Catherine, your wine. Oh, thank you, Mr. Birnbaum. Now, oh, Mr. McClintock, we have an awful lot to talk over. First thing I learned about Indian fighting was to wait for daylight. What has our conversation got to do with Indian fighting? Indian fighting is good experience for our kind of conversations. Oh. It'll wait, Catherine. Evening, Sheriff. Mr. McClintock, we had quite a ride out here. Oh, oh I finally got that team settled down. It's your move. No, it's your move. I just canceled it. Oh. Now, look here. You're not going to sit here all night long and play chess when the matter of our daughter remains unsettled. I am going to remain here and play chess, and the matter of our daughter is settled. She stays. Oh, such stubbornness. Catherine, your hair. Oh, oh it is a mess after that awful ride. No, no. The tricks a man's memory will play, huh? <laughs> Mr. Birnbaum, I think that you've completely lost your mind. You have done something to your hair. I have not. <laughs> if I had it, be none of your business. I'm certainly not going to put myself in the place of the, those blondine trollops that you seem to prefer. Fell it. Oh. <laughs> Still at it all night. Well, McClintock never quits. But a Birnbaum has to. Besides, the game is over. You got me. Oh, no, Mr. Birnbaum. You've still got a good game. Oh, you play chess. Yeah. Please, take off. Oh, pretty good. Fair. Well, looks like I won't have to come into town always to get a game. Remember, I'm a bad loser. It's your move. Yes, sir. something I wanted to return to you. Here it is. 
From the President of the United States of America, to First Sergeant Michael Patrick Ilhuli, for bravery above and beyond the call of duty. It's your papa. Reminds me of the first time I ever saw you. It was over 17 years ago. You walked into my store, not much bigger than the bundle you were carrying. And in the bundle was the most beautiful baby I ever saw. And was she hungry? <laughs> you walked all the way from Superstition Creek just to trade me that medal for a case of canned milk. G.W. was off somewhere as usual, fighting Indians. Sheriff! Sheriff Floyd! What, well, have you seen the sheriff? Kind of early for him. To try his house? Uh, why didn't I think of that? Looks like burn bonds is open. Maybe somebody in here knows. So there you are, Sheriff. I told you you were headed for trouble. Trouble? I want to know by whose authority you let those Indians stay in town. Those savages are wards of the government, and I am the representative I of that... I told government. Sheriff Lord that he could put them up down by the clay side. Because the town's named after him, he thinks he owns it. Well, you check the books in the recorder's office, and you'll find I do own a fair piece of it. Hey, guard, if you knew anything about Indians, you'd know that they're doing their level best to put up with our so-called benevolent patronage in spite of the nincompoops that have been put in charge of it. Those Indians need my permission to leave the reservation. Those chiefs have been giving orders all their lives. It's pretty hard for them to understand that they have to hold up their hand like a schoolboy in a classroom. The law is very clear. I told you you'd get no satisfaction from these people. Well, we'll get the girl back. Girl? The girl the Indians kidnapped. But don't worry. I armed the settlers and set them to rounding up those red devils. What is this about a girl? Millie Jones, one of the settlers' daughters. The Indians kidnapped her. That's ridiculous. And you turned loose a lot of farmers with shotguns? I certainly did. You're insane. Let's go, Sheriff. Mr. Douglas. Oh, Ms. McClinic. Much as I hate to agree with GW about anything, you haven't changed a bit. You're still an hysterical fool. I'm into town. I got worried. What about? I thought maybe Katie shot you. Not yet, Drago, but it took restraint. Wait a minute. You better take Agar along. Not that he'll be much help. Drago, have him on the horse. Just a minute. Well. <laughs> Will you stop showing off and getting this buggy? Mercy. Mercy. That horse is a little green. Let's go. Yeah. Just where do you think you're going? Don't use that range, boss. Tone of voice with me. Carter! Get it for Mr. Poor Boy's mind. Mount up some riders. Bye, boss. You heard the man. I don't like it, Mr. McClinic. I don't like it one bit. What don't you like? They're planning to hang an Indian. Ah. Hold it! Not so fast, Mr. Boss of the whole country. 
Unless you want to wear a big hole in your middle. How long is GW going to let that cheat chalker push him around? That cheat chalker has a sawed-off shotgun. How do you know she didn't wander off someplace or meet some fella or something? What are you saying? That I didn't raise my girl right? That she'd wander off all night with some man? There's a lot of things I'm not saying to you, mister. Well, you got a sawed-off shotgun in my middle. But how do you know this Indian had anything to do with it? She's gone, ain't she? She's gone. Been looking for me, Pa? Where you been, gal? Young Ben took me for a sunrise ride, and the horse wandered away. <laughs> <laughs> you come down over there. But, Pa! She's telling the truth, Mr. McClinic. We wasn't doing nothing. Well, that's not important right now. The important thing is that you don't draw that hog leg, or this will be worse than Dodge City on Saturday night. You get on back to the wagon. I'll tend to you later. Now for this young whippersnapper. Now, no harm has been done. And young Ben here is one of the nicest boys in the territory. So just put down that shotgun I'll and let's teach forget... him to fool with Mike. Now, we'll all calm down. Boss, he's just a little excited. I know, I know. I'm going to use good judgment. I haven't lost my temper in 40 years. But Pilgrim, you caused a lot of trouble this morning. Might have got somebody killed. And somebody ought to belt you in the mouth. But I won't. I won't. The hell I will. Never. The clinic rider! Aha! Oh, Martin! Thank you, Arna. I ought to what? Why, you Just a minute. What do you do with my glasses? Hey, now stop this or you'll be sorry. Hey! Stay out of this, Jake. It's everybody's war.
the mud off of each other. We used to have quite good times doing that sort of thing. There are a lot of things we used to do. Good night, Mr. McClintock. Any luck? What are you talking about? I mean, divorce. She still wanted. Yeah. You know something, women are funny. She fought like a wildcat on your side out there this afternoon. Come home, she slams the door in your face. That divorce business, is that what you get when you pay a woman not to live with you? It's about it. Some women I've known, it'd be worth it. You know, if we had any moral character, we wouldn't be standing here covered with mud drinking when we should be washing. G.W. Drago. <laughs> these biscuits. Mm. Oh, thank you, Drago. Good morning, Mrs. Warren. Good morning, Mr. McClintock. And on why, Mrs. McClintock, you have a black eye. I do. Ooh. All, all, and Becky's coming home today. And that's not all. There's a little something we'd better get settled. Hmm? There are no men listening now, so we can be ourselves. Oh, sure, I let you get away with all that guff the other night. But now that we're alone... When I want the opinion of the hired help, I'll ask for it. You know, you could wind up with two black eyes. What? Oh, I realize you had to put on that big act. We always have to just before we get ready to forgive them. 
generally for something they haven't done. But you and I both know that's just to keep them from getting the idea they uh, run things. McClinton give you that black eye? No. Nobody gave it to me. I won it. <laughs> Morning, Mrs. Beach. Mr. Beach. I'm going to have to stop calling you Tomboy. Oh, Becky. <laughs> Mama! Oh, darling. Mama. I wasn't sure you'd be Oh, here. I've been here a few days. Oh, Becky, I've bought you three of the most beautiful dresses. Becky! Oh, Uncle you... Drago! Oh, oh! Did you bring your old uncle a coming home present? Sure did. What is it? A mustache cup. Oh. And what did you get me? Prettiest Palomino pony that ever packed a saddle. Broke the stand, drowned, tie in the counter. Oh, <laughs> Uncle Jake! <laughs> what are you doing with Mr. Douglas's tuba? Oh, Mr. Douglas has a fat... had a little accident. Uh. You know, I brought you a whole shipment of licorice sticks. But now that I've seen how much you've grown, I think we'd better exchange them for a couple of bolts of dress goods, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, the mayor was going to be here, but he had to go to the territorial capital on a horse theft matter. But I'm going to give his speech. <laughs> Don't worry about the mayor. I'm sure that he can find a bill of sale for the horse. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to welcome the fairest... What am I doing? We are here to welcome back the prettiest girl that was ever born in McClintock or in any part of the territory. Hey, Davey! Yeah? I've got something for you. Dark Master up the junction told me to let him ride, so I locked him in here. I've had my scalp a long time, and I aim to keep it. And now she's come back to us. Gone are the pigtails, but the freckles are still on the prettiest face that was ever born in McClintock. Hey, that's Puma. And it's true. The government did turn them loose. Good old Puma. I'll never forget when he brought G.W. home. Your father had a hole in his chest and a 104 fever. Of course, they weren't very manly about it. He came past the house at a high lope and threw him on the doorstep. And you do remember them good old days, don't you, Katie?
Yatahe, my friends. Yatahe. Puma, honored enemy. Does Big McClintock forget? Also, Blood Brother. <laughs> no, I'll never forget that. All wound. Does it hurt still? I feel it when it comes on to rain. An inch higher, and I wouldn't have had to worry. Ah, Big McClintock, that was remembered fight. <laughs> we return with news. Our people have more trouble. You see, I learned good English now, Big McClintock. Learned in white man's jail. But we would have you talk our course at government hearing. I understand that Governor Humphreys is going to preside at that meeting. Yes, Puma, I'll translate your wishes. Mr. McClinic, uh, uh, could I impose upon you to use your Comanche to tell these Puma chiefs... Puma is chief of the Comanches, and he speaks English very well. Oh, well... Your people will have to follow my instructions to the letter. It is we the law go. of the land... Well, now, just a minute. Well, for heaven's sakes. Surely. Will I see you there, Beth? Of course, Davey, and you can have the first day. Sis? <laughs> Don't want any sister of mine talking to strangers. Davey's not a stranger. He clerks in Burnbottom. He's an Indian. Darn you, Drago! <laughs> Now look what you've done. Baby, this is Devlin Warren. He works for you, Papa. Dev, this is Miss Becky McClintic. Those are my things. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'd have known you anywhere, Miss Becky. What do you mean? Oh, I mean, you look so much like your mother. Or even prettier. Oh, Mr. Warren. Mother's much prettier than I am. Many a fight started with words like that. Come on, get in the place. Hello, Jing. We got jelly pie for dinner. Oh. I'm not cooking. No, he's not. Junior! Yes, Miss Becky? You remember Junior Douglas, Mama? Oh, of course. How's college? Valedictorian, 95. Oh, congratulations. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Douglas, we will see you at the party, of course. Oh, delighted. Well, it'll be pretty hard to keep young man away. <laughs> yes, sir. There you go. Yes, boss. Bag it's all on it. G.W., you remember young Junior? Oh, yes. Like father, like son. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. McClintock, uh, I hope you don't think I'm being presumptuous in asking for the honor of calling on Miss Rebecca. Well, there she is. Ask her yourself. Well, thank you, sir. Jing, now I'm going to get fired. Get up out of here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. How do you know me now? Are you at the party, Junior? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what? Like father, like son. What did he mean, Matthew? Come on, Ching. Grab a root and growl. Oh, I could go to the end. And then don't go. Come on, I'm ready. I'm going to go to the end. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go. Well, you're doing a good job, Miss McClintock. Thank you, Miss Flora. Deb, when you're finished there, go over and help Drago with the beer cakes. Yes, Mom. Could you come and help me a minute? I certainly was surprised to hear you went to college. Why? I don't know. Junior says Purdue's a good college for a backwater place like Indiana. Well, he did indeed. Oh, could you do this? I can't reach it. Why didn't you finish college? Lack of funds. My father got sick and he had to come out west. So he took out a homestead. You know, your mom's sure cute. It's uh, too bad you didn't inherit her eyes. Well, you'd been lucky if you'd inherited a few things from your father. Oh, really? For instance? It was common sense, for instance. Common sense? Yeah. 
You don't see him being fooled by some dude like Junior Douglas. Junior's not a dude. He's nifty. This needs a woman's touch. And besides, he got a letter at college. What sport? Glee club. Very strenuous. <laughs> oh! Don't you dare hug me! Oh! I have no intention of hugging you. I'm the latest Terpsichorean dance steps, brand new, brought by him directly from New York City. <laughs> All right, Mr. Fiddler. <laughs> Well, I can take care of that. sister to dance. Get up and we can do this all over again. Yes! That's enough. You fought it. It's Get all over. Way. Quit butting him, Birnbaum. He's a hard man. Not your son. Look, you fought him fair and square. I don't think it was so fair and square. Well, you want to take up where he left off? If I did, you wouldn't find it so easy. Now we've had enough of this. Well, when are you going to quit walking away? Just as soon as we're out of sight of the party. A little lesson I learned back home. Don't fight in front of women. Well, we're out of sight now. So we are. Such vulgarity. Someone should do something about it. You're right. 
Absolutely right. Fancy fighting for a country boy. Two years at Purdue, Mr. McClinic, on the boxing team. I never thought any farmer could whip me. But you sure did. Better get him cleaned up. Get him some water, Jake. Yeah. yourself cleaned up. Go ask that girl for a dance. Who? Oh! Did I miss one? Oh. Where is he? I'll find him, that young whippersnapper. Trouble. Where is that farmer boy? Where is he? Where is he, G.W.? Oh, so you're the young farmer boy that whipped my nephew. Well, I'm Fault Leroy Sage, young Ben's uncle. Well, I'm no farmer, but if you're young Ben's uncle, yes, I whipped him. And you're intruding. What's intruding mean? Budding in. Oh, so he's insulting me. Well, then I got another reason for wallowing him. Besides, on account of him thrashing my nephew, young Ben. Montleroy, you can't get mixed up in these youngsters' quarrel. Family honor. I can't have said a farmer whipped a sage. You're twice his size. Don't let that bother you, Mr. McClinic. Mr. Fauntleroy insists. I'll just have to teach him the same lesson. Say! Sorry, young feller. <laughs> Hate to have to do that, young fella. No hard feelings. Not yet. Not yet what? I mean, that isn't all. Now, wait a minute. Fauntleroy, we're going to make this a fair fight. Of course we are. Of course we are, G.W. There'll be none of this. Ooh, I wouldn't do that, G.W. You wouldn't do... No, I wouldn't do that. And, Dev, I don't want you kicking Fauntleroy in the knee. He didn't do no such thing. And none of this nose twisting. Ah! He's all yours. Oh. Well, well, where are my glasses? You are, right, young fella? Ouch! I'm all right. This Indian agent will stop stepping all over me. I beg your pardon. He dug you. You're just funning me. But I want you to know that boy fought me a fair fight. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Fauntleroy. Here's my uncle. Fauntleroy, what have you been doing? I hope my uncle didn't bother anybody. No bother. I think we'd better join the ladies before they get curious. Drago. Yeah. Fauntleroy, let's line them all up for a dosey do Jake, you think tincture of arnica would help? Could be. Used to help you. Gentlemen, to the medicine cabinet. you out so early. It's something I have to get straight in my mind. Yeah? What? 
Мама. Why'd you and Mama stop living together, Daddy? Why'd you separate? Aren't you gonna answer me? No. It's sort of my business, I think. I don't. Is it another woman? Usually is. At your age, you always know what's usual. Is it Mrs. Warren? Becky? I don't want to start laying the law down your first day back home. But I'll have no more such talk. First time I ever saw Mrs. Warren was last week. She has a job here at which she's very good. And I hope you'll have the good manners to not pry into other people's business. Your mother's and mine. Pretty good shot, Daddy. Oh, I can understand your trouble. Mama's often so... Well, so petulant. Petulant? You learned a lot of words back east, Becky. Wish to God they'd have taught you some meanings. You were only about six months old when your mother stayed alone with you in the sod hut under eight foot of snow while I moved the herd 300 miles south to try and save it. Saved about half of it. You were a little more than a year old at the time of the great Comanche raids. We stood off 500 Plains Indians for nine days. Petulant, Becky? I think you better go on home. See that Ching gets those birds. Becky! Come here. <laughs> There's something I ought to tell you. I guess now's as good a time as any. You're gonna have every young buck west of the Missouri around here trying to marry you. Mostly because you're a handsome filly. But partly because I own everything in this country from here to there. They'll think you're going to inherit it. Well, you're not. You're going to leave most of it to... Well, to the nation, really. For a park. Where no lumberman will cut down all the trees for houses with leaky roofs. Nobody will kill all the beaver for hats for dudes. Nor murder the buffalo for robes. What I'm going to give you is a 500 cow spread on the upper Green River. Well, that may not seem like much. It's more than we had, your mother and I. Some folks are going to say I'm doing all this so I can sit up in the hereafter and look down on a park named after me. Or that I was disappointed in you. Didn't want you to get all that money. But the real reason, Becky, is because I love you. And I want you and some young man to have what I had. Because all the gold in the United States Treasury and all the harp music in heaven can't equal what happens between a man and a woman with all that growing together. I can't explain it any better than that. All right, Daddy. Becky. When you're as old as I am, you'll thank me for this. Daddy, I'm full grown. I wasn't worrying about me. I was thinking about you and Mama. Ha, ha, ha.
Well, sir, all three of them fell right out of the carriage. Oh. <laughs> well, it's getting rather late, Becky. It's bedtime. Oh, Mother, mm -hmm. he brought this. He must have intended to use it. Oh, well. Sing I us did. a song. Well, if you really want me to. Gosh, I haven't played in you quite You know so. just right for me. Sure. It's the rage now. Oh. 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 <laughs> Dev, what are you doing? Oh. I, uh, I just thought I'd get another cigar. When you've got one in your mouth and two burning in the tray. <laughs> Not move. Fellas want me to play all the time. <laughs> You're cuter than a baby steer and softer than a mouse's ear. I want the whole wide world to hear. You're just right for me. You're sweeter than... Oh, no, not that rhythm, Junior. Do it the way they do at the plaza. I know the words. Sure, Becky. Will you sing with me? Of course. I love a man who's witty and smart and clever. It's your move. Oh. Oh, Deb, you're playing like an amateur. Let's call it an evening. I'd like to know where your mind is tonight. You're sweeter than the early sun. Or bluebells when they start to Pretty good. You Voice like her father. Feel like it's a king. You're just right for me. Sweeter than honey, finer than wine. I'm sure they found you on that honeysuckle vine. I would melt in your embrace. You'd disappear without a trace. To die like this is no disgrace. This is the time. This, this is, is the place for you. Just right for me. So good, I kind of hate to break this up. But we're going to have that Indian hearing tomorrow morning. Uh, sir, about our conversation earlier this evening, uh, I believe I'd better apologize. Yeah? Yes, sir, I've been thinking it over. And uh, when I called you reactionary, well, that's merely my generation's term for your generation. Then. Well, uh, good night, sir. Uh, good night, Miss McClendon. Good night, and do come again. Good night, Drago. Night. Boss, what does a reactionary mean? Me, I guess. He says that anyone that wanted to sell at a profit was a reactionary. Was we reactionaries back in them days when you were selling beef cattle for six cents a pound on the hoof? Well, no use arguing with him, college boy. Devlin Warren, if you was my kind of man, you wouldn't let some dude walk off with the prettiest girl west of Denver without putting up some kind of fight. Does it show? Well, what can I do? I'm just one of her father's employees. I'm just a hired hand around here. Every so often, Dev, you spill the strangest ideas. <laughs> everybody works for somebody. Me, I work for everybody in these United States that steps into a butcher's shop for a T-bone steak. And you work for me. It's not much difference. Daddy, the most terrible thing just happened. Junior's horse ran away. The one he rented at the livery stable. You tied up a rented horse by the reins. He's probably back in the stall by now. I think we can get Junior something that he can ride. What I'd rather do, Daddy, is drive Junior home in our barouche. It's a lovely evening, and I'm sure Uncle Drago wouldn't mind driving. I wouldn't. I got the kind of manners. Don't keep me from saying so, just to be polite. I'll drive him home, Mr. McClinic. And you don't have to come, Miss Becky. I'll see that he gets home safely. I can take care of myself. You got yourself a foot, didn't you? Dev, get the carriage. Drago? I'm going with them. Now you got me wrangling dudes. You may 
Make a man feel like a king. Just right for me. Miss Becky, somebody better help me watch the road. You know, I'm new around here. Might take the wrong turn off. Devlin Warren, you know there isn't a turn off between here and town. You disappear without a trace. To die like this is no disgrace. This is time. This is time. Devlin Warren, what are you trying to do? Kill us? Better have your friend drive? Yeah! I said what I said, and I'll stand by it to the death. Shoot him, Daddy. Shoot him at once. Well, why? My honor is at stake. Well, now, your honor. Absolutely. He impugned my honor. Impugned? What does that mean? Slander. He slandered my honor. He did? I said what I said, and I'll stand by it to the death. He admits it, see? Shoot him. Well, what is he admitting to? Why, he called me a... I won't even repeat the word. I didn't necessarily call you anything, but I said what I said, and I'll stand by it to the death. Well, just for the tally books, what did you say? I said that any girl who would permit a man to kiss her before they're formally engaged is a trollop. He said it again! Shoot him! Now, hold on. No, don't hold on. If you're my father, if you love me, you'll shoot him. Well, I'm your father, and I sure love you. So... <laughs> Oh, you shot him. You really shot him. Hey! He dies. If he dies, he'll be the first man ever killed with a blank cartridge. We use this to start the races on the fourth. Hey! I'm on fire! Oh, you poor dear. Poor dear? You'd have had me shot in cold blood. But it didn't happen. Yelling I insulted you and all. What you need is a good spanking. Oh, Deb! Daddy! Leave me out of this. I think I'll give you what you deserve. You wouldn't dare. Oh, wouldn't I? Ah! You'll think next time before you have someone shot. This kid and yelling is going to help you. Don't you go Daddy! Wait a Daddy! Oh, Daddy! My daughter? Deb. Oh, you mean you stood there while that brute beat our daughter? G.W., what's happened to you in the last three years? Better part of that, son. Oh, isn't it enough that you've always treated me like a squaw without subjecting dear, sweet Becky to this crude, vulgar Catherine, way of Catherine, you women are always raising hell about one thing when it's something else you're really sore about. Oh. Don't you think it's about time you told me what put the burr under your saddle about me? I don't intend to stand here and hold a midnight conversation with an intoxicated man. And I am not intoxicated. Yet. Yes, Sergeant. Big McClintock, we know you get us fair judgment. You gentlemen, follow me. Well, Jake? GW? Well, GW, it's been a long time. Not long enough. Cut, Bert. Your husband is a rude man. Yes, Cuthbert, I know.
Where you want the Indians, Mr. McClintock? Mr. McClintock is not running this hearing. Sergeant, seat those Indians. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, be seated. You know, the whole tribe here want to come into town. Proceed, Lieutenant. This hearing is now in session. Governor Cuthbert Humphreys presiding. Good luck, Daddy. I'm afraid it's a packed court. Government edict number 826 has ordered that the Comanche Nation be transferred from their present reservation to Fort Sill. It is the government's claim, as filed by Indian agent Agar, that these chiefs, after being released from prison by a kindly government, did then rouse and incite defiance among the tribe against said order. It seems, gentlemen, that although some of these chiefs speak English, Chief Puma is quite at home in our language, they have chosen Mr. McClintock to be their spokesman. I speak for the Comanche, or rather I offer this translation. Proceed, Mr. McClintock. We are an old people and a proud people. When the white man first came among us, we were as many as the grass is of the prairie. Now we are few, but we are still proud. For if a man loses his pride in manhood, he is nothing. You tell us now that if we will let you send us away to this place called Fort Sill, you will feed us and care for us. Let us tell you this. It is a Comanche law that no chief ever eats unless first he sees that the pots are full of meat in the lodges of the widows and orphans. It is the Comanche way of life. This that the white man calls charity is a fine thing for widows and orphans, but no warrior can accept it. For if he does, he is no longer a man, and when he is no longer a man, he is nothing, and better off dead. You say to the Comanche, you are widows and orphans. You are not men. And we, the Comanches, say we would rather be dead. It will not be a remembered fight when you kill us, because we are few now and have few weapons. But we will fight, and we will die Comanche. Thank you, Big McClintock. Am I to gather that Comanche defy the government of the United States? Yes, you may gather that the Comanche defy the United States government, or at least this commission. Gentlemen. It is the order of this court that these chiefs be incarcerated until such time as the detachment of United States cavalry be made available to escort them and the Comanche nation to Fort Sill. This court is adjourned. Oh, McClintock! You are important chief amongst these white people. Sway them. Have them give us few guns to make the fight worthwhile. Let us have one last remembered fight for end of Comanche. I almost wish I could arrange that, Puma. Ahalani cha. Ahalani cha. Sergeant. Yes. Good God. Carry on. Gentlemen. It's sad, these changing times. It isn't the times that are changing, Mama. some thinking drinking, Bunny. Is that boxcar still on the siding? Well, sure, but... Uh, but what? Well, I don't like it. 
You don't, eh? You figure if them Indians get out of there and leave the cavalry on a wild goose chase, that great white father is going to get nosy. Get nosy, and he'll investigate. And when they find out how that side saddle governor's been messing things up, they'll give those Indians a fair trial. But that's live ammunition in that boxcar. You know what'll happen if them Indians get some guns in their hands? Somebody's going to get hurt. Is Puma's word good enough for you? Well, I don't... <laughs> McClinic, you got yourself a partner. Leave me out of this. Hey, McClinic. <laughs> good night, Bunny. Good night, Governor. Governor. <laughs> Katie with her light red hair, sweet as the roses on a summer air. I'll find her somewhere while the moon is high, and I tell her that I love her, and I'll love her till I die. Mrs. Warren. Oh, good evening. I waited up for you, Mr. McClinton. Oh, how nice. Yeah, I, uh, I want to talk to you about something. Delighted. Delighted. 309 times straight. I beg your pardon? 309 times straight without a miss. Got to be a record. I suppose so. Now, Mr. McClinton, what I wanted to Two say... Two pound Stetson, six inch brim, 53 feet in the air. It's got to be a record. I'm sure it is, but the reason I waited Dang up... Damn it, woman, can't you hold that glass still? Uh, of course, sir. Now, down the hatch to my world's record. Down the hatch. Yes, sir. And now, to the governor of our territory. The governor of the territory, sir? Now, don't you stick up for him, Mrs. Warren. You're a fine woman, Mrs. Warren. But you'll certainly go down in my estimation if you stick up for Cuthbert H. Humphrey, governor of this territory. I don't mean to down change... Down the hatch. Oh, yes, sir. Down the hatch. Cuthbert H. Humphrey, governor of our territory, is a cow. You know what a cull is, man? A cull is a specimen that is so worthless that you have to cut him out of the herd. Now, if all the people in the world were put in one herd, Cuthbert is the one I would throw my rope at. At whom? At whom I would throw my rope at. Natural born cull. Another touch, ma'am? Oh, no, sir, no. <laughs> well, I... I don't mind if I do. Good. Can't walk on one leg. Oh, I didn't mean to be vulgar, ma'am. Can't walk one limb. It's all right. That sounds silly. Only a bird can walk on a limb. You know my wife? Her name's Kate. She insists on being called Catherine. Do you know her? Of course, Mr. McClintock, and that's what I wanted to talk about. Well, to. she thinks that Cuthbert H. Humphrey is panting for her like a bull buffalo at the first green up of spring. But what Cuthbert is panting for is my money. Don't make me feel like I'm drinking alone, ma'am. Very well, Mr. McClintock, if you insist. Down the hatch! Good. I have something very important to say to you. Very important. I guess it'll have to wait till the morning. <laughs> Toodle. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. Betty, bye bye. <laughs> Whoops, oh. <laughs> this 
Mrs. Warren. <laughs> Let me assist you. Very kind. <laughs> What's going on here? Now, Catherine, are you going to believe what you see or what I tell you? Uh, Mrs. McClintock, hope you won't misunderstand. It's the first hundred women sitting on his lap that I misunderstood. Number 101 is quite simple. Now, G.W. McClintock, I have some... He's gone to sleep. Just when I know exactly what I want to say to him, he goes to sleep. I waited up to talk to Mr. McClintock. I wanted to tell him I was quitting. You see, Sheriff Lord has asked me to marry him, and... Oh, oh congratulations. I don't want to seem prudish, but if you are going to marry Sheriff Lord, it seems to me that you're sitting on the wrong man's lap. We'll have a long talk about men in general. Ladies, one moment. Oh, oh, oh. Watch out, you'll get us all killed. Oh, what? Oh. Wait a minute, ladies, till I catch my breath and I'll get you up those stairs as sure as my name is George Washington McClintock. You may be quitting, Mrs. Wallace, Mrs. Ward, but not tomorrow. I want my breakfast in bed. I want to know. I know. Toast, lightly brown. Somebody sure put a knob on my skull. Here's Katie. I was speaking. Katie, why? There, Mrs. Warren was there. Oh. And there you was there. Oh. And there that whiskey bottle was there. Oh. And Katie's temper being what Katie's temper is, well, there you are. Drago, old friend. Huh? My wife does not understand me. Why should you be different than any other man? Oh, I've got to get you upstairs. Get you ready for that big celebration tomorrow. What is it? Drago, I am sleeping in the den. is the ninth consecutive year, it has been my privilege and my pleasure to inaugurate the McClintic Fourth of July celebration. Now, the first event will be the wild horse race. But before I fire this shot to start the event, I would like to say a few modest words regarding my stewardship 
of this great territory. Caution you boys about some of them eggs, because some of them eggs are last year's holdovers. seem to be enjoying yourself? Oh, yes. This is wonderful. It's the only thing I really do enjoy about this barbaric country, the Fourth of July celebration. Well, Catherine, I've been here for three days. I haven't heard from you. Is anything wrong? Wrong? Well, I just hope that it hasn't been necessary for you to say anything to uh, GW. What are you talking about? Well, Catherine, you see, I'm in a... Uh, rather delicate position, being governor of the territory and all. I just hope you haven't found it necessary to say anything about... About what? About you and me. <laughs> Why, you pompous windbag. Do you think that you're the only man who's ever tried to play patty fingers with me? Who's ever tried to lure me into the moonlight? Well, no, but I... Well, I'm a big girl and I can take care of myself. My husband knows it. I can assure you, Governor, that your reputation is untarnished. Now, get out of my way. <laughs> Disqualified. <laughs> oh, here you go, Curly. GW, GW, you'll never believe what happened over there. What? You smell a beer. Well, naturally, I'm drinking beer. Ladies and gentlemen, the next event will be a contest between the two Bronco Busting champions of our territory. Remember the year I rode in that event? Wore your garters to hold up my sleeves? <laughs> we had a bet, and I won it. George Washington McClintock, you are a very crude man. Well, I guess so, but that was a rough horse. Like to jarred my insides loose. <laughs> but it was worth it. <laughs> Three beers! Yeah! 
myself. Nothing busted but my pride. Well, that ought to even things up, farmer. For what? For that sore nose you gave me the other day. Well, that ain't what's sore on him. <laughs> So start meandering. Come on. Now, what is that, false courage? <laughs> Why, you know a Douglas doesn't ever use a thing like that. I want you to get on that horse, get out in front, and stay out in front. I'll be out in front, Dad. All the way. Ah, uh, good boy. I remember, stay out in front. That Agamemnon's a good horse. Oh, I finally got his way, but I reckon he's riding out his last war party. Well, he won't get very far. But one thing still has me puzzled. Where did they get the guns? I was wondering the same thing. My kidney's been bothering me. Funny. G.W. Psst. 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 <laughs> what an idiotic joke. Joke? Do you think that was a joke? Oh, shut up. You want everybody in town to see me. You look good in feathers. Oh. Deb, I think they've gone. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? What can I do? Nothing. Just like you've always done. How long, G.W.? How long what? Cat, she's been riding herd on you for two years now. I'm a peaceable man. But my father used to say, you raise your voice, it doesn't do any good. It's time to raise your hand. Well, I've been planning to do something about it. I'll, uh, I'll have another talk with her. Talk to her? Talk to her? Talking won't do any good! <laughs> Becky, have you seen your... What's been happening around here? 
You've got hay all over you. <laughs> Been some mighty sneaky goings on here during that raid, Mr. McClintock. Who was it said only a trollop would kiss a man before they were formally engaged? Oh, but we are engaged, sir. You are? That is, with your permission. Well, you've got it. Oh, Mrs. Warren? I think it's wonderful. I guess this is the only engagement that ever started off of a spanking. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I reckon Birnbaum is right. All right. Lord bless us, this is going to be a great day. Doggone it, folks. Let's don't let a little old Indian Ray break up a good barbecue and a rodeo. Yeah, oh. meat's down. Let's go. Yeah. You contestants, get ready for the cow pony race. Yeah. Who is it? It's me. Let me in. Not now. Right now. Are you insane? I want to talk to you. It'll have to wait. I've taken all I'm going to take from you. You are insane. You are going to tell me why you packed up, picked up, and walked out on me. Two years ago, you remember, you came home from Denver with lipstick all over your... <laughs> lipstick on my collar. I've got the shirt to prove it. Who cares? Why, you big... <laughs> G.W., you are a ruffian. Cuthbert, you are right. Well, what kind of a family is that? <laughs> the best. And dangerous, son. Who won the race? Who cares, man?
season? Nope. No more dancing at the governor's ball? No, G.W. Happy day! 310 times without a miss. <laughs> That's a record. Oh. 